Hi guys, Jasmo here and today I have for you a build guide for the Impervious Toxic Rain Trickster. Impervious because this build is virtually unaffected by most map modifiers in the game and Toxic Rain provides very consistent damage delivery which goes right through things like block, proxy shields, temporal bubble and apart from sheer chaos resistance it's pretty much unaffected by other monster defenses which makes this an excellent league starter for people who like to do a variety of content focused around mapping and has a very low starting budget which scales well with small incremental upgrades. This guy is part one of three and it will cover explanations about the build defenses, the offensive scaling, gear, gems and passives and the next two videos will cover respectively crafting of every single piece of gear I have on my character as well as leveling. So let's start with a short overview going over why you would play this build and what is it good for. Toxic Rain can be played on many different ascendancies. It can be played as a Pathfinder, Raider, Champion, even Occultist and Trickster. All are viable options. But for this character, I wanted to specifically bypass as many mechanics as possible and not be reliant on things like Flask or Curses specifically, which can get affected by map modifiers. I also wanted an immunity to action speed slows to make things like Delirious content easier and safer. The Toxic Rain Trickster is a versatile jack of all trades that excels at content that stacks a lot of player countering modifiers. So for example, expedition encounters with lots of remnants in an 8 mod corrupted T16 map with altar modifiers. While other builds would have their damage drastically reduced by these factors, Toxic Rain delivers its DPS at full efficiency. So mapping with this build, even in aggressively rolled maps, feels like running white maps on another build. That's why it's one of the best builds for pushing Atlas at the league start, uh, because you can run corrupted rare maps without worrying about the mods at all. And immunity to action speed, slows and ailments makes this build feel good in delirious content. And at the medium budget version, which I'm playing, you can do wave 30 simulacrum, delirious maps, delirium mirror all very comfortably. And when it comes to bossing, I've done all normal bosses deathless, including Maven, Depth 200, Aul, Eater of Words, Searing Exarch, Uber Elder. But I do not recommend this build for Uber bossing because it definitely does not trivialize these encounters enough to beat them without a good amount of skill. It's doable if you're a very skilled player but I don't recommend it. The versatility of this build allows you to choose basically any league mechanic adapting to the currency farming strategies. You can delve, do heist, simulacrum, farm guardian maps or logbooks and in all of that content the build will perform very similarly so you're not ever limited by the, uh, the content you're running. Um, let's now talk about the defensive layers. That's going to be the first thing I cover because it's a major focus of this build and what makes this character so safe to play in most situations and then we're going to talk about the damage and the gear and gems and so on. So first for avoidance to avoid the incoming damage we're relying on evasion and elusive. We have about 40,000 evasion plus elusive we're able to avoid most of the hits coming our way and we also have a persistent blind aura as well as blind on hit from the born and shadows forbidden jewels which are very cheap and this effectively increases our chance to evade against all affected enemies and to mitigate the elemental damage we have 76% max elemental res plus 8% reduced elemental damage taken if we haven't been hit recently coming from the Solaris Pantheon which is a very very strong Pantheon that kind of uh, shores up our defenses makes it uh, so that it fills the holes that we would otherwise be lacking in. To mitigate the physical damage we have 20% physical damage taken shifted to elemental damage taken instead which then gets reduced by our elemental mitigation and we have three permanent and endurance charges coming from chest implicit and trickster charge duration is uh, making it basically last forever. Um, then we have also 21,000 armor which mitigates the remaining physical damage and the Pantheon provides us also with an additional 6% uh, physical damage reduction against the bosses. We're also capping our Chaos Resistance at 75% and for content like for example Simulacrum you can use the Shakari Pantheon for extra 5% Chaos Damage Reduction. We are mitigating all damage over time through Lethe Shade and also a Damage Over Time Mastery which makes us take 10% less damage over time. Additionally the Born and Shadows node gives us a uh, like a 
pure 15% reduction to damage taken from all blinded enemies. So no matter what kind of type of damage they're doing, it's going to be reduced by 15% if they're blinded and basically everything around us is blinded constantly. We're also using cast one damage taken Molten Shell, which can absorb more damage than our entire hit pool. And with an optional Val Molten Shell, it provides a good defensive cooldown for when you see the damage coming. Um, the character also has 100% spell suppression chance and 53% of all incoming spell damage is negated by it. Uh, the next layer of defense is the recovery. So we passively regenerate about 10% of our health per second, which allows us to easily run Blood Rage and have plenty of regen left over. And the major part of our recovery is the Polymath node, which lets us recover 6% of life and energy shield on kill. Uh, this in densely populated content basically instantly heals, heals you. Your entire health pool goes back up, so the enemy has to one-shot you, otherwise you're gonna heal back up. Uh, we also have Ghost Shrouds, which recover our energy shield whenever we get hit, which for my character is currently 711 energy shield, and that can be bumped up to 1200 energy shield with better gear. Additionally, we also recover 50 ES whenever we get hit by a spell uh, through the spell suppression uh, node. We're also immune to so many things. We're immune to action speed slows through the one step ahead no node. We're immune to all elemental ailments, which includes chill, freeze, ignite, brittle, scorch, and sap. This is simply achieved through the modifiers on the boots, chest, and an anoint. Um, we also have a po possibility of picking up chance to avoid bleed, poison, and impale from, from the masteries. Um, and our flask and the minor pantheon provide us with a 94% reduced effect of curses on us. Us, so you can run maps with any curses and they're pretty much not gonna affect you at all. Uh, the, the resistances are also overcapped for um, exposure so we're mostly covering that and if you uh, add an additional modifier on a flask suffix you can even cover the resistance uh, penalties from altars. And the Solaris Pantheon also fixes our vulnerability to crits making us take no extra crit damage if we've been crit by a, uh, by a critical strike recently which means essentially we cannot take any extra damage from crits uh, more than once per four seconds which is a huge layer of defense so all of these layers of defense make us relatively safe against everything that the game can throw at us because of how comprehensively they cover all bases and we're not abusing any broken mechanics or stacking millions of armors but it's a very solid defensive package that can be replicated for other characters on a very modest budget so now let's talk about the damage. To scale the damage with Toxic Rain, you want to primarily focus on Chaos damage increases and damage over time increases as well as multipliers. You can also add projectile damage. Uh, attack speed is a great um, stat to stack as well. Attack speed scales our damage uh, a lot because the pods overlap and do damage simultaneously. Uh, duration is another modifier that also allows you to stack more pods at the same time in the same place. Um, and then we're also scaling uh, enemy Chaos damage taken from things like Wither, reducing their chaos resistance. Uh, also modifiers to attack damage do not apply to toxic rain so be careful of that. However modifiers to damage with attacks do apply. So pay attention to the exact wording and always check with patho building if you are not sure. And to better understand the damage scaling let's also go over the gear, gems and passives and I'll try to primarily focus on the damage. Uh, again I will mention how to craft every single item in the next video. In this video I will just simply cover explaining like what are these items, why do we have them and what do they give us. So primarily uh, we take care of the bow first. Bow is the most important part of the build, that's why this is the most expensive item as well. When it comes to the budget, um, on a low budget at first you can start with something like a quill rain. Then while leveling you can simply have a bow with plus one or plus two to level a socketed bow uh, gems. Uh, then later on you're gonna get something like this. This is a very low budget bow. It's like 1.5 divines to craft something like this. This is what you should get What you should get started with. Uh, it's very easy to craft. I'll cover that in the next video as well. Uh, and then for the medium budget you go with something like this. This type of a bow um, with plus one to level of socketed gems. Plus two to level of socketed support gems, um, chaos damage over time increase, attack speed as well as damage over time multiplier. Uh, this will cost you between 10 and 12 divines. You can craft this yourself or you can buy this from trade. There's plenty of these available at all times. Uh, and it's of course going to be covered in the crafting guide. Um, the bow allows us to increase the level of toxic rain by also using empower. So with empower, we have empower level four here. Uh, we are increasing the level of the toxic rain. You can see level 30 right now. Um, also void manipulation when you have the awakened version increases the level and amulet can increase the level by plus one or plus two here I have a simple plus one amulet uh, so that's how we are getting the uh, toxic rain to level 30. 
Uh, the other pieces of gear that increase our damage are going to be, of course, the plus one amulet. This also um, is crafted with an essence for 34% increased chaos damage. The same thing can be done with the rest of your jewelry. So you can, for example, have rings. As you can see, my rings have also 32% increased damage, 34% uh, increased chaos damage. So the chaos damage increases uh, work very well. It's a simple essence craft that you can use on uh, these items. Then for the bow uh, quiver, you're looking for things like damage over time multiplier, with attack skills and attacks, uh, attack speed as well. Attack speed is a very, very powerful um, multiplier to your damage. So you're looking for that as well as damage over time um, multiplier with attack skills and chaos damage over time multiplier with attack skills. The double dot multi would be an upgrade to this, but again, this is a medium budget. So the most expensive piece of gear is the bow. Everything else is between one and five divines, where, which means you can very, very easily and progressively upgrade this character, craft something for one divine, craft something for two, three, four, five, uh, uh, without uh, breaking a bank, you can just do one item at a time and progressively upgrade your character. Um, when it comes to other damage modifiers, we also have the gloves here. Uh, these gloves have increased damage over time from the implicit apothecary gloves, and they are hunter influence and a uh, warlord influence. So basically, awakener orb together, uh, increased damage over time and damage over time multiplier. And then uh, you can also add things like um, attack speed and so on on this. Um, so that's basically it when it comes to the uh, damage. Um, on gear you could also have a, a searching eye jewel that would give you a two percent reduced enemy resistances if you uh, withered them recently that's another modifier that you could also get for the damage uh, the rest uh, of damage comes from our passives, uh, from the cluster jewel and also some from the flasks because we have increased attack speed modifier in here which gives us a lot of damage and also the onslaught which gives us a significant portion of damage. So when, it, when we look at the uh, damage coming from the passive skill tree, maybe I'll look at the POB to show you uh, clearly here. So we have the um, damage that currently sits at 14 million DPS and for this 14 million DPS is with four overlaps only, which you are gonna have more than that. Um, the breakpoints for AOE, by the way, if you're curious, this is not something that you need to pay too much attention to because especially if you're playing with a Phantasmal Toxic Rain, which goes for more coverage, the bosses and monsters will move anyway. So this is not that important, but if you're trying to shoot for the optimal overlap, at least with five projectiles, uh, that would be 39%. This is written in the notes here as well. So you don't have to remember, 39% increased AOE will give you roughly 3.9 overlaps on average with five projectiles um, and a typical overlap otherwise is about 4.5 projectiles so sometimes it's gonna be four sometimes five rarely it's gonna be six sometimes most is gonna walk out of your damage it doesn't matter that much but optimal aoe is 39 percent uh, the config if you want to know exactly what your damage is somewhere between four and five so as you can see this is a setup for uh, pinnacle bosses on the medium budget setup and we have uh, four pods that gives me 14 million uh, uh, five pods gives me 17 million somewhere in between we can uh, assume about 15 million dps for this character so we have about 15 million dps um, and the damage comes from uh, lots of increases to chaos damage so for example we have increases to chaos damage on the cluster jewels um, you can uh, you can get tons of damage coming from the cluster jewels the ideal cluster jewel is a large one with unwaveringly evil with Wicked Pal and with Unholy Grace. The Unholy Grace especially is the highest node, as you can see, 7.5% damage. Uh, so this is a, the optimal cluster jewel. Early on, you can either go, um, which I show here with a version that uses uh, different nodes here, before cluster jewels. So this is all showed in the POB. I'll explain POB in a bit. Um, or you can just start with any cluster jewel that is large with eight passives. It doesn't have to have all of these uh, notables. You can upgrade this over time, just so that you can get these midi ones which are easier to get. Uh, for the mediums one, medium ones, we get Wicked Pal and Flow of Life on both of them, same thing. Um, and for small nodes, if you can uh, if you can help it, you also want to get, for example, strength or some resistances or attack speed. These are also very helpful uh, stats to also have on them. But yeah, Wicked Pal, which gives us chaos damage over time and duration and flow of life. And as you can see, a duration, uh, this one is giving us a lot of damage. We are stacking lots of duration because for a single target um, and also just for even for clear and for content like simulacrums, for rituals, for harbingers, whenever you can shoot and uh, lay these spots on the, gr on the ground and just stack 
them, your damage is going to be noticeably higher because you're going to be benefiting fully from the duration. So for the duration, we have uh, this node here plus the mastery for more effect, uh, skill effect duration. We also have uh, this one from the Thread of Hope. So this is a um, very large Thread of Hope, which allows us to pick up this duration wheel fully, as well as the Harrier, very powerful node as well. And then we get a duration from atrophy. We get, uh, you can get duration from the damage over time mastery if you want to go for more offensive setup instead of the less uh, damage taken from damage over time. We also have duration from hunter's gambit and we also have duration from entropy. So we're picking up basically every single duration node that we can here, which is increasing our damage by a lot. Um, there we got a setup for the master Fletcher. So increased damage, as you can see, increased damage over time with both skills uh, applies, right? So there are different modifiers that apply different modifiers that don't apply if it says attack damage it doesn't apply but attack speed applies and damage with with both skills applies so this fully applies uh, this whole thing is giving me like three damage per point so this is a very valuable uh, wheel or at least half a wheel to pick up um, and then when it comes to the damage for this build that's basically it we're picking up also this wheel uh, and because we're stacking a lot of chaos resistance we're picking a mastery for chaos damage over time multiplier per four percent chaos res so that's it for that we're also using auras uh, we have one offensive aura which is the malevolence again this gives you extra skill effect duration so it double dips basically it gives you the multiplier and the uh, multiplier coming from the skill effect duration uh, so that's what we have here uh, that's basically how we are achieving the damage. Let's now talk about the uh, other skill gems. Oh, also we have um, we have also Anomalous Despair. Anomalous Despair, a lot of these gems that you're gonna see in the medium budget, you might think they're very expensive. There's only pretty much one uh, expensive gem that I'm using uh, that is uh, from the alternate qualities and that is the Anomalous Blood Rage. The Anomalous Blood Rage currently costs uh, four divines, I think, uh, if we lower the level. It can be any level, 3.7. Yeah, so it's about four divines for the uh, Anomalous Blood Rage, but it's a massive, massive multiplier because we are using uh, plus two Frenzy Charges node here with the Swift Killer. So the Frenzy Charges are gonna be very important. And if we pick the Frenzy Charges on the chest, then we're not gonna get the Endurance Charges so easily. And we're gonna have to spend uh, points on getting something like Enduring Composure. I like this setup much more. And we do wanna run Blood Rage all the time. We have the survivability to sustain it permanently. As you can see, I can turn on Blood Rage. And yes, my Energy Shield will go down, but this is gonna be constantly uh, recovered through the Ghost Shrouds, as well as through the the polymath node which recovers our uh, energy shield as well as life on kill um, and our life is sustaining this without any issues and the attack speed bonus is massive it's absolutely um, absolutely massive so the frenzy charges are super valuable and you stack them pretty quickly on bosses uh, because we do attack very quickly we attack a lot we attack with multiple projectiles and even uh, though we are not relying on hits we still have 63 percent chance to hit that means every other hit is gonna uh, every hit is gonna basically uh, hit twice right every time you attack you're basically gonna hit the boss twice uh, so this is uh stacking very very quickly uh same thing applies to like wither which we are getting from the uh withering touch support again this looks this is divergent withering touch uh, divergent withering touch currently is like uh let's see if we lower the level this is 88 chaos right so these these are like uh, extra money that you're spending but it in improve, improves the quality of life and improves uh, the damage and how quickly you can start stacking the damage it really adds up once you make all of these upgrades but all of these upgrades are like within uh, the medium budget which is like about 50 divines that i spent on this character and uh, none of them are more expensive than the bow and the bow is something that is pretty much the first thing that you want to invest in and everything after that is going to be cheaper to get um what else do we have we have the despair uh, we have the divergent purifying flame because we have them on arcanist brand so that you can put the totems down uh, put the brand down and start shooting and uh, as you're shooting the brand is gonna immediately apply the despair to the boss it's gonna debuff it and if there are multiple enemies uh, it's gonna keep applying it to multiple enemies this is amazing in things like simulacrum and rituals and so on so whenever you want to curse something, you just put your brand down and it's not only going to curse, it's also going to use the Divergent Purifying Flame. The Purifying Flame also going to give you some extra regen and uh, curse resistance, so it's very, very nice. 
um, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, let's talk about the aura setup. So in order to reserve all of the auras, um, initially in the low budget, you're not gonna be running determination uh, because determination is not that powerful. Uh, it definitely covers our weakness, which is the physical damage taken. As you can see, in terms of max hit, we have here like 23, 24K physical max hit, which is pretty decent for the character that is on the right side of the tree. And the way that we are protecting ourselves from the from that, it was already explained the, in the defense section but the armor is uh, definitely helpful however you don't you just don't have the reservation you could sacrifice um, you could sacrifice the malev malevolence early on um, and that could be the thing you drop but your damage would uh, not feel too good so I, I recommend running with the grace malevolence early on and then later adding determination once you can afford to uh, essence craft a helmet and also use um, enlighten early on you can also cut off uh, the defiance banner but that's why running this in the six link instead of the ballista totem because ballista totem doesn't really it's not really here for the damage it's here just for the extra wither we're also applying wither with the uh, withering step uh, which is gonna uh, give you in this case it gives me how many withers nine uh, nine withers immediately and then we get the remaining withers from the totems so the aura uh, setup is basically enlightened three malevolence grace determination defiance banner and clarity level one clarity level one is for the watcher's eye which i'll explain in a moment and then we have a reservation efficiency from an essence on this helmet and also the implicit um, then also for the mana cost, which is very important early on, uh, before you get the Watcher's Eye, which gives you minus 10 to total mana cost uh, while well affected by clarity. Before you get the Watcher's Eye, uh, which this Watcher's Eye with just one modifier uh, is going to cost you right now 50 chaos. Okay, um, so this is definitely a cheap option to pick up. Of course, the best option to pick up would be like movement speed or attack speed with precision plus damage over time multiplier with malevolence. If you can get like three mods like that, that's going to be much more expensive. That will be in the high budget version, but this is in the medium budget version and it helps with your mana. Our mana cost is right now one. I could get it to zero if I um, increased the uh, tier of this reduced mana cost of attacks modifier, but this reduced mana cost of attacks modifier from the Searing Exarch is very, very powerful. And in conjunction with the uh, minus mana cost crafts in here, um, it's gonna make it so that you can spam the skill and not have to have a mana flask or anything like that. You can reduce it to zero even um, even with mana cost one, I can still do no region maps very easily because as I'm killing things, I'm recovering mana from the polymath as well. Again, 1% per mastery allocated. So let's say you have like five or six mastery allocated, allocated here. So it's going to be like 5% life, energy shield and mana every time you kill a single monster. So it's going to constantly recover um, your all resources and uh, yeah this is a very very powerful node and uh, I basically start with this node because it's so nice to have this much sustain while uh, leveling and while running. Uh, what else do I need to cover? Uh, anomalous withering step all the gems are explained so maybe let's go over the path of building so i can show you the path of building setup because this will tell you everything like i i made sure to put everything possible that you that you might want to know in here so to start with uh, you have leveling trees we have leveling trees we have leveling uh, skill setup so you go to skills you click on leveling that this is going to give you the setup also you can read the notes and the notes is going to explain which um, which skills you want to use and how is your setup going to look uh, at the different levels uh, and then on the items uh, section you also pick up leveling here and this setup is basically what i had at the end of the campaign um, and when i went at level 64 to do infinite heist so that's what it covers uh, you go from level one here it shows shows you how are you supposed to allocate the passives, what to prioritize, of course, if you feel a bit squishy, add more life, if you feel low damage, add more damage. Uh, and then we go to level 64, infinite high. So at this level, 64 with these nodes as well, uh, with these exact skills, with these uh, items that I had. Uh, so basically you can use this as a, as a reference. This is gonna tell you exactly what you're looking for. This is how I went to do infinite heist and that's how you can fund your character so that you can, you can get a six link, you can get whatever, uh, if you want to use any specific uniques. However, this build doesn't use any uniques. It's very SSF friendly, uh, but you could use some uniques if you want. 
uh, whatever you want to buy from trade to get yourself ready for maps to have a very strong start to the league you can do infinite heist on this setup and this is basically uh, equivalent to how your character should look like at the end of the campaign so that's the leveling setup uh, for the mapping we got a low budget version so you can see we're just adding passives and you can see the smooth transition now we are respecting this and we're going this way so that's when you do this uh, at these levels and then we got the mapping budget which is pre-cluster setup then we go to skills we can also click on the mapping budget items click on the mapping budget and this is every single item what you're looking on every single item for very very simple very very cheap uh, items that have like just basic modifiers uh, maybe with one essence maybe with one craft and uh, not too good rolls this is made so that you can very very quickly acquire this for a few chaos at the start of the league before cluster jewels and you can just level with this and as you can see this setup itself is 4.8 million dps right so with 4.8 million dps you can do any content uh, that uh, allows you to farm up currency and you can very comfortably uh, farm uh, your character up to be a little bit stronger and then when you want to move on to the medium budget you can click here on the medium budget this adds the cluster jewels and the the thread of hope as well as the watcher's eye and then you can look at the skills you click on the medium budget this will also change of course because we have a different setup because we are adding additional aura this also tells you where things are socketed so you can see i have it socketed in gloves in body armor in helmet you can see that clear and then we have the medium budget items which are exactly set up here for this character and you see we're back to 14 million dps and if we do four pods it's 17.7 .7, so it's about 15 million dps i also have the relic written here um the relic that i'm using is damage over time multiplier and ghost dance but i did allocate the ghost dance here to not be confusing because people will see okay people will basically not see it and not allocate it so i allocated it here um but that's the relics that i'm using they're not very important and i made sure that i'm not using anything uh, crazy on these so that in the next league if the relics are not gonna go core and these things are not gonna be available you basically have the same character you're gonna use some other league mechanic or other items or other power creep things that are gonna be available um, but that's how the character looks like in this league uh what else we can go through flasks as well for the flask setup you're looking for a uh, bleed removal on the life flask and then you're looking for jade and granite flask um, as well as quicksilver and silver um, and then you're looking for reduced charges per use on the silver flask so that all of my flasks have 20 quality and as you can see they're, they all last this exact same duration 7.2 seconds and they all consume 30 out of 60 charges so on bosses i can use them twice uh, without uh, without having to recover them uh, and in the other content they're gonna last exactly the same amount of time and also these have increased charge uh, recovery so that i can sustain them much easier um, and for the suffixes which is the important part you're looking for it doesn't matter on which flask the suffixes are by the way you're looking for increased armor as high roll as you can get you're looking for increased evasion so as you can see i have armor flask with evasion evasion flask with armor because it's cheaper to get that uh, then we also have reduced effect of curses on you during effect that's a very very powerful modifier that you definitely want on your mapping flask and this is going to work together with this pantheon for reduced effect of curses um, and then we also have the quicksilver with attack speed you could also put extra resistances on the suffix if you want to like cover um, the exposure even though we are overcapped uh, a bit for the exposure uh, but you can get even more resistances for the altars and things like that um, and yeah in the next video i'm gonna cover basically the crafting how to craft all of these items because it's much simpler than it seems like you can look at this chest and be like holy shit how did you craft that that's so many modifiers but it's actually very very simple to craft things like that and it's uh, not that expensive the most expensive part usually is uh, crafting the the prefixes with eldritch currencies depending on how lucky or unlucky you're going to get um, but that's basically it i'm gonna provide you with the uh, path of building in the description if you have any questions let me know in the comments below there is no high budget version here because i'm probably going to play a high budget version with a different ascendancy and then make a uh, ver make a build for that but uh, if you can get to the medium budget version you're going to be able to do all content and uh, then the for high budget version you can check out the discord maybe you can ask questions and uh, uh, we can tell you what do you want to upgrade if you want to go for the high budget version thank you so much for watching and see you next time Bye bye